Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Changing the Climate, a show where we talk about the change world around us and how we can make it better. Brought to you by Climate Change Realty. All right, hello everyone, and we are back, of course, every week with another episode, and I am very lucky to have Miss Brittany Lejess on the show. Brittany, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's honestly an absolute pleasure. And as I say every single week, I always love to get the show started by getting a little background on who you are and how you got to be doing what you are doing today. Yeah. So um, I was born and raised in Wisconsin and I moved out to Colorado about five years ago. And I was honestly just trying to meet people at the time. And I somehow got connected. It's all very blurry still (laughs) but I somehow got connected to um, someone on Instagram and they had a nonprofit called B0 and they were doing their monthly meeting at EcoCycle which is the recycling facility in Boulder so I I went just kind of to meet people and see what was going on Um, and they were talking about waste which is something that I had never even thought of before. And I think I was so drawn to it because where I'm from, (laughs) I mean, like my parents used to burn their garbage (laughs) in the backyard. (laughs) Crazy. Um, We always have recycled. We, We do have a recycling facility here, but it's just very like single use, we don't think about the environment type of thing. Um, so I was kind of like, oh, wow. I've been overlooking this for like 25 years or whatever. Sure. Um, so then I started, you know, just kind of doing cleanups and things with the nonprofit. Um, and then I started doing pop-ups at a local, not really a farmer's market, but kind of like that. It was a street fair, I guess. Cool. And I just kind of wanted to bring this new niche to the community and see, you know, if there was interest in it. I also just wanted to bring the awareness. So I was still working at my old sales job at the time. And then every Friday afternoon, I would leave early, pack up my car, pop up my tent, put everything out there. Um, And what were you selling? So I had some bulk items. Cool. But if you're going to a street fair, you're not like, let me grab my jars. I'm going to fill them type of thing. Um, So it was a lot of like reusable items to replace the single use items. Uh And then it was products that were packaged more sustainably. Um, So like a, chapstick was packaged in paper that you can Mm. compost as opposed Uh, to plastic yeah so it's just kind of like a a new way of looking at like distributing products per se just like in regards to packaging or like the product itself not having any waste involved with it yeah exactly it was basically like you know anything that i was selling Mm -hmm. The purpose behind it was to contribute less to the landfill. Yeah. So everything could be consumed, basically. There was no waste. Right. Or it fit into our circular economy. Okay. Where we keep using it and there's not the end life. Gotcha. For sure. So I think it's useful for us to kind of start this podcast by talking about what is waste. I know something that I had Joshua Nisco from Pangea Organics on a couple months ago and something interesting he said was, is that if, if like to, to really p- make people understand how much waste we do produce as Americans. And that's interesting what you said about how your parents used to like burn your garbage and you're like, you just had this eye opening moment five years ago is if we, and I see it now after, since he said this is if you just spend a week not throwing anything into the trash or the recycling, like your house would be like a shit sty, you know? So, so mm-hmm. w- what exactly do you think of when you think of waste? 
I think, I mean, the general overall, mm-hmm. um, cause I do want to touch on the term zero waste. Sure. That's next. We kind of get that twisted a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think it's something that maybe we didn't value or we didn't fully get everything out of that item, whatever it is. Um, and it's, it's a lot of single use things. Right. So we don't, we don't care. I mean, kind of goes back to, we don't value items that we use. Mm-hmm. Um, I hear you. How do you think it got like this where we, it, it's like, it's, it seems like a, an effect of this like consumer economy where we just are so used to just going to the store every week and getting a bunch of like stuff. And then mm-hmm. we use like, if we get like a bag of rice, like we use all the rice, but then we throw out the plastic. And I, what you're trying, kind of trying to do is find a way for us to not have to just keep getting a new piece of packaging or, or just something in that way, just like a way for us to have a complete cycle. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's very interesting. Um, so yeah. it, how did it get like this? That was the question. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> no, that's an important one. For sure. Because when you think about, when I think about like my grandparents uh-huh. years ago, they, they were not wasteful. I mean, they still, they still aren't real wasteful compared to a lot of other people. You know, they garden things and can things and, put them in jars and reuse the jars. And my grandma used to reuse plastic Ziploc bags and uh, gift wrapping on presents, things like that. Um, But everything kind of shifted in the 1950s actually. And I want to say, I don't know if this was the very first item that kind Mm -hmm. of changed everything, but it definitely was one of them. Um, the Dixie cup came out huh. and are those plastic or paper? They're, I think they're lined with plastic. Okay, I don't know okay. what they were back then, but yeah. I'm pretty sure they are now, which makes them trash. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's even this black and white photo, which is kind of, it's, you should check it out. We'll it's do. this family, um, throwing, disposable items in the air like celebrating the convenience of single-use items like right. oh cool we don't have to do dishes anymore uh-huh. you know we can just use this it's so easy it's quick it's convenient and that was kind of the start of the shift of everything i see what's wrong with something like that why can't we just you know just keep consuming and just throw everything out i mean there's you know we got landfills we'll just dig a hole and bury it right <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, I mean, seems to be the mindset that we're in right now. It's just like, oh, it's all good. You just throw it in the bin. The guy comes yeah, and picks it up. I we're think, fine. I I think over the past couple years, even mm-hmm. um, now that people know we can't just send our recycling overseas or whatever, I think that's actually kind of waking people up a little bit for sure but i think there's still the piece where they're like well okay but what do we do about it yeah well i to everything i was just talking about find value in your things and look at the items that you're using and what they're made of and where they're going and how long is this gonna last me yeah, well, it seems like right now, like you're talking about this idea of a cycle where we go, th- we, we make the product and we go through the beginning and then it can be reused. Right now, I think like most of the stuff that we have, it's created, it's sent out, it's manufactured, it's filled with things. And then it's, um, it, it, it ends at the bottom. It gets put into like a, a bin. And, and then in our minds, it's just like, mm-hmm. okay, the bin, the bin gets taken by the man, the man goes and takes it and then poof, it's gone. But then when you're aware of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and the fact that all these landfills are filling up and then they're i think they're like creating like 
something's going on like in the bottom of the landfills where like there's stuff that's like bubbling up and like creating more waste and it's going into our environment and we're filling our environment with a bunch of crap. So I, the solution that I think you and I are, are interested in is this zero waste economy where something's created and then it goes all the way through. And instead of being taken away to be put somewhere, um, mm-hmm. it's reused again. So what, what is, what is zero waste and what is this community that right. people are trying to build? Yeah, that's actually very important. Um, sure. because that word gets twisted a lot and zero waste is really just a mindset. It's, it's a way of like being, it. um, it's not, you can't actually consume zero waste. Mm-hmm. Um, because even when you think, Oh, well, what about this reusable item I got that I'm using? Yeah. Well, what about the resources and the energy and this and that, that, that they had to use behind that product? Sure. That is considered some form of waste. Um, and we don't have an infrastructure right now that allows us to produce zero waste. Yeah. And I think people look at it like, well, what can I fit in my mason jar Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people will be like, I've only made this much trash in five years, which, okay, that's great, but that's not realistic. Yeah. Did you travel for five years? Mm-hmm. You know, did you drive a car? Did you get in an airplane? That's waste. So I'm trying to think about what, how is waste like defined? Is it, is it something that's generally bad for life it's something that's bad to put in the environment for example we have all this microplastic now that's circulating through our water supply and then we don't like that because when you drink it, it gets into your body and it causes cancer or whatever so is waste generally something that it has a negative effect on on life or is it just something that we don't necessarily see value in that's kind of how I view it. Something that we don't find value in. Right, right, right. Um, or maybe something that doesn't have a purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the items that are in the landfills, when you really break it down, they're not bad items. It's just a bad design. Yeah. And the materials that we're using for those things are just they're poorly designed. Yeah. But I, but it's cheaper. That's the key. That's Mm -hmm. the key. Do you think there'll come a day where we can get all these items out of the landfill and then reuse them for something else? I don't see that. (laughs) She's like, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't know. There's like millions (laughs) of things in there. All right. I, I, I guess, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I definitely don't see well, that happening. Um, I don't know. I just think of like, I guess that's, he uses like aluminum and back to the future. I think of him like doc, like pulling up in the time machine and then like crushing up the cans and putting it into like the Mandalorian or no, not the Mandalorian, the DeLorean. Sorry. You know, eighties. Um, <laughs> why do you think people overlook all the waste they're producing? Why do you think we like, and we were talking a bit about consumerism and not p- placing value in certain things. Like you said, the items are good. Um, why 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 is it like this is it and you're saying the invention of the dixie cup in the 1950s and people are like oh it's all is it convenience is it market based is it just a, a sheer lack of care for for um, utilizing stuff on earth i don't know i think it's a lot of things i'm jotting sure. them down as i'm thinking them so no worries no that. worries um so i think it's all that society has known Uh uh-huh um for the past 70 years for sure and i think it's convenience like we talked about before it's easy i think people they don't they don't see the direct effects on them so why would they care you know you'll hear a lot of people say people who do care nowadays they'll be like yeah, they'll be like, well, I want a planet for my children. Mm-hmm. You know, they're thinking forward. Sure. Um, and I also think a lot of people just really don't know. Yeah. Like they just, they don't know. 
I think that's that's so true. Um, yeah, because e- like even yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> right. Education yeah. is the most important piece when it comes to this realm. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I started this four ish years ago, people didn't know what zero waste was. It was still on the forefront and it's still kind of a niche. Yeah. Um, but it's on the up and up. And I think people are, it's just becoming more common to see things even in the media and things like that. Um, but there's so much to it yeah. There's so much under the surface of it too. You know, it kind of started with the whole um, straw issue, you know, yeah, the turtles, the turtles and the straws, which is, yes, that's true. Uh-huh. But it's so much more than that. I mean, textile waste, I think is, the number two contributor in the world that's clothing to our waste problem textiles are like clothing like what's the what makes this stuff yeah i mean it's fair we need clothes can't deny that and i I honestly i couldn't agree with you more and what i'm finding through trying to figure out how to solve these environmental or climate issues or bio um whatever these environmental issues is it is all about education and that's why i love this show and that's why i appreciate you coming on so i think it's a good segue to kind of talk about what you have been doing over the last four years so Brittany, what is refill revolution yeah so refill revolution when i had the storefront i mean it's going to look a little bit different now Mm -hmm. but um it was always a place where i wanted community to be able to gather for education um, or just even sharing things too. You know, sometimes I would hold events and it's just comforting to be able to talk to other people who are in the same world as you are. Um, But I also wanted it to be a safe place for people to come um my thing was always it's not all or nothing because that's also something that a lot of people think if they're gonna be a part of the zero waste world they have to be perfect or they can't do it at all yeah which is really not the case um and i wanted it to be a place where people could come and refill their items and also get all their other needs too. I never had food because that was a whole thing. That would have been ideal where people brought their own containers for that, but that's not something that I wanted to dip into. Um, It's a whole different thing. For sure. But my, my main thing or the main criteria for the products that were in my store and are still on my online store is that it's either a bulk refill item or a concentrated form of something. Yep. So, so you can make yeah. your own. Yeah. Um, the second part is that I had reusable items that would essentially last you forever or a very long time to replace a whole bunch of single use items. For example, and the third part um, that I mentioned before is things that you were somewhat things that had to be single use like shampoo or something, you know, you're going to use it all. Um, So instead of maybe you buying shampoo in a plastic bottle, I had shampoo in a bar form. So you use it and it's gone. Huh? I've never heard of that. Yeah. Or even dish soap in a bar form that's a thing now which is super cool everything's kind of shifting towards the solid form of things um and then i even kind of took it one step further some people were putting shampoo bars in a box or in packaging or whatever and i would work with the manufacturers and say look we don't i don't need this in a box can we completely have it package free yeah. Um, which a lot of people were okay with. Saves Very them cool. money. 
and it's unnecessary. <laughs> I love it. I love the way you think about things. It's very interesting. So can you tell us a little bit about what it was like starting this business? So it sounds like you went from being interested in getting involved with the community to doing a pop-up to doing an online store, and then you had a storefront. So what was it like to just start this own business? Did you study business in university at all? No, I cool. went to school for criminal justice back in Wisconsin. I have a two year degree in criminal justice. I hated school. I've always hated school. Join the club. Um, <laughs> what? I said join the club. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was, I didn't, I never knew what I really wanted to do, but that's, you know, where I'm from, that's what you do. You graduate high school, you go to college and you move on. Yeah. Um, but in college I was working for a naturopath and we also had, so she had a clinic and a retail store and I was very involved in that. I really got into natural products and herbs and all of that stuff. Um, and then I was the manager after college. So that kind of, I mean, I've always been really business minded, you know, from when oh, I was yeah. like five, I was selling lemonade at my mom's thrift sales in the garage. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, and then I came out to Colorado cause I wanted to do an herbalist program and then everything just kind of totally changed. For sure. Um, so getting to your question, it was not only hard because I didn't have the business background or whatever. Um, but it was such a niche market that I was going into. That's like I kind of mentioned before, people didn't know, like you see the name refill revolution. People thought I refilled ink <laughs> huh. like for printers printers. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I got a call like, oh, do you fill toners? Whatever. <laughs> I'm like, no, I fill dish soap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, things like that. Um, yeah. So there was this, I can't tell you the number of days where I sat in my store just trying to build a clientele, not having hardly anyone walk through the door. Sorry to so, hear that. And because I was doing it all on my own, education was the most important piece of this so that people knew what is this? Right. What is zero waste? What is the zero waste movement? Why do I want to do this? Um, but I was stuck in the store all the time. Uh -huh. So it was like, you would just hope someone would walk through the door and care about it. And I would say it took, you know, like a year just to kind of, get that clientele and then mm -hmm. be able to have more time to go in the community to educate. Yeah. Um, things like that. Well, you're totally badass. That's super cool. I, I can totally attest to the fact that starting business is hard and it does take a year to build a clientele. I spent uh, most of last year knocking on cold doors and I only got my first listing a, a couple weeks ago. So I, oh, I, I totally, wow. congrats. Well, thank you. Yeah, I can totally attest to that. It's definitely the truth. But um, so what would you what would you tell people when they came in? You're like, they're like, what is this place? What would you say? Yeah. So a lot of people would walk in and be like, what is this place? <laughs> and they'd be like, uh, do I get soap? Is this just like a soap store? I'm like, well, it I mean, yes, I have a lot of different soap here, but you know, it's all about reducing our waste in this, 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 that way, whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, it kind of looked different depending on who it was because some people would be like, oh, yeah, okay. And other people were just like, whew, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> it's probably tourists and stuff as well. Did, did you have a most popular product that you would sell like a lot of? Um, in terms of the bulk refill items mm -hmm. laundry detergent and dish soap very interesting um and then for the other stuff like shampoo and conditioner bars cool 
I would say those were refillable floss. That's a good idea. Wait, but, but don't you, th you throw out the floss after you use it though, right? <laughs> yes. So it's not reusable floss, it's refillable. So the container can be refilled, but then the floss is actually made out of, well, it was made out of silk, but now they came out with a vegan one. Um, That's cool. I was going to say like horse hair or something. I don't know. Mm -mm. <laughs> People wouldn't like that. Probably. <laughs> um, and then you can actually compost the floss too. So there's kind that's, of, okay, that's cool. Two pieces to it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is your, is this is your fifth year in business now, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken? Um, yeah, I guess it would be, well, over four, about to be over four. Yeah. Cool. So, so it's, it's, uh, we all know it's hard to start a business. The first five years are really tough. And now you just got hit with the whole COVID situation. So how has this virus like changed your strategy and affected the way you're running Refill Revolution? Yeah. So, well, I was closed for a couple months at the beginning ish of last year, you know, kind of, what was it? Last March ish mm -hmm. coming up on a year of fun. <laughs> um, so I started doing a local delivery circular system. So I was using jars, but then, you know, Mason jars, whatever. Yeah. So um, I'd take them there. They could bring them back. They would pay a deposit for them. Um, but then I ran into issues. <laughs> like everybody was buying jars mm -hmm. when COVID hit. You yeah. probably don't realize that unless you were trying to buy jars for something. Nope. But even all the restaurants and stuff, you know, they were doing to-go drinks, the bars and stuff. So then it got harder. I was like, I can't even get jar. I can't even get mason jars. Yeah. I mean, the there was just shortage everywhere, all the supplies and everything like that. Um, but thankfully, I only had to do that a couple months. And then I just reopened with limited hours but i still offered a delivery system as well because a lot of people you know a lot of people still aren't going out yeah so um the whole bring your own container thing really affected it too yeah because people didn't uh, want to like germs or whatever yeah they don't trust people didn't trust that it was clean or even though it was soap, they were typically refilling. Uh -huh. um, so I also <laughs> kind of changed. <laughs> so I also kind of changed the way that I was refilling. Um, initially, I put everything out for the customers to fill mm -hmm. because I was like, well, that's, you know, they want to be a part of it. C community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they actually like, you know, they loved refilling most people. Yeah. And you take the kid and show them like, yeah, we're saving the world. Pump, pump. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Kids love to do it. And I love to see that. Mm -hmm. um, but besides the fact that my floor was insanely full of soap because they're big, like pumps like this, you know, yeah. one pump would be like half a gallon of something. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa. Um, so anyways, I put everything behind the counter so that people could just come to the counter, give me their jars. And then I was the only one touching everything. This is during the COVID. Yes. Um, so I think that helped too. For sure. Were you doing the deliveries yourself? Is this, is this a one woman show going on here? Do you have any employees? Well, I did before COVID. Um, and then... Also, I was doing most of the deliveries, but I did have one of my old employees. He was biking them around too, because that's cool. ideal. But I'm like, I definitely don't have time to get on a bike and bike these around. Okay. <laughs> so it was kind of a mix of me driving them um, and then him biking them around. Very interesting. Do you want to tell me what TerraCycle is? Because I, as I understand, you guys have some kind of relationship going on with your business. Yeah. So TerraCycle teams up with 
a lot of different brands um, across the board. And they set up a system where you can give them your hard to recycle items or packaging, and then they upcycle it into new material. Okay. So um, the, a big one that I was doing, and I still do want to figure out a way that we can do this in the Boulder area. Um, but I was, I teamed up with them and late July. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that? It's like a snack brand. I thought you were actually talking about the, the month and like time frame, <laughs> like late July. No, I, I haven't heard of them. Not a big snack guy. <laughs> well, they're really good snacks and I would recommend checking Shout them. Shout out late July, everyone. Check them out. <laughs> For real though. Yeah. Um, but they have like tortilla chips, popcorn, you know, common things people eat. And late July was like, okay, cool. We will offer this free program for people like you mm -hmm. to host a box for our consumers to bring in their empty packaging. So their chip bags. Yeah. I wish okay. I would have counted from the very beginning how many chip bags I had, but I'm telling you it was thousands. People were just bringing in their empty chip bags to your store? Yes. Very cool. And then I would send it to TerraCycle yep. and then they would turn it into something else. And I'm not like saying this is the best thing to do. I also was a little skeptical at times um, on what they were actually doing with it. I know they turned it into like playground equipment and park benches and whatever, but it's like, okay, we can't just like, keep making a million park benches. benches you know what yeah. I mean yeah I do for sure so it's better it's one step better because we're upcycling it uh -huh. um but it would be even better if we didn't have to do anything with those chip bags yeah if we had some sort of refillable system or different kind of packaging um so I guess I didn't really I'm just gonna be honest I didn't really like the lack of transparency with that company. Um, okay. But I was trusting it was better than nothing. <laughs> For sure. Um, so then another one that we had was a toothpaste tube recycling program. So Colgate sponsored that. That's and cool. they were like, cool. I don't care if you bring in, you know, well, I think they own Tom's toothpaste now, don't they? But they were like, I don't care what brand it is. You can bring in your empty toothpaste tubes. We'll pay for the shipping back. And then we'll pay TerraCycle to help turn all these toothpaste tubes into something else. Mm -hmm. Whatever that was. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, Talking to you, it's it's very interesting. It, it seems to me like the kind of the foundation and the mindset behind you starting this business was not necessarily to well, you wanted to create a community environment, but it sounds like you're very interested in in changing the society and changing the way people think about how we we use waste. What would you say to to someone who's like maybe my age or like in school who's has this entrepreneurial mindset wants to start their own venture and has some sort of mission behind it whether it be racial equality or waste or i don't know there's all sorts of issues going on what would you as someone who's now several years down the path of starting your own business what, what advice would you give to someone should they do it should they work for someone else first should they follow their dreams should they be ready to fail i'm just curious what your thoughts are i mean i think you should always work for someone else first mm -hmm. um i didn't <laughs> it's hard i mean but you didn't in college or anything oh i mean i, I worked at the rec center for like four years so i had like some work experience but yeah I didn't, that's what i mean to, to be fair i did like an apprenticeship with my dad who's a travel traveling jewelry salesman so i learned how his business works and yeah. that is sales as well but it's, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll yeah, let you, let I mean, you go on though. Yeah, you're doing great things. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, I'm all right. The podcast is always fun to just see other people's perspective. That's what I really like about this show. Yeah. Um, it was just, I mean, 
for this business, it was just a whole thing that I didn't realize it would be. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, retail, been there, done that. I know all you got to do is order stuff, right? Mm -hmm. No. (laughs) I think you need to be prepared for like everything behind the scenes. Uh And I'm just going to be honest. Love it. I... At first, it was okay because I wasn't very busy, so I could focus on marketing and social media and responding to this person and this and that. Um, But then as I got busier in the store and, you know, then I'm ordering more products and try sourcing bulk stuff when that's not a thing. I mean, it's becoming more of a thing. It's becoming easier now for Mm -hmm. zero waste stores to get those things, but it wasn't people were like, why do you want that? Can I just sell you like a hundred little bottles of it? And then you dump it into a big container. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> You can't do that. Yeah. That's totally going against everything. Yeah. Um, where was I going with this? It sounds like yeah, you've had so, a, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So basically multitasking, I just had to learn to do all those things because you don't realize, I mean, unless you have a business partner, Mm -hmm. I went into it like, Nope, I don't want a business partner. I can do this on my own. (laughs) I know that I like things how I like them. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why would I want a business partner? You know, I want it to be my vision. Maybe it was selfish. Maybe not. Whatever. But I think it would have been helpful to have a business partner because you can hire employees, but they they don't necessarily, well, they don't care about it as much as you. It's not no. theirs, you know? Right. Um, and sometimes I would, you know, not feel creative or something even like that. It's, it happens. It's natural. It does. And then it's, it's like, cyclical. Oh. I yeah. think we have days like as entrepreneurs, we have days where like everything is perfect. You kill it all day long and then you get home mm-hmm. and all the, you have the, all these crazy ideas about how to keep growing the yep. business. And then other days it's like, Hmm, what am I doing here? You know, yeah. and now you have to be ready for that. Absolutely. And you, and you have to learn that just shut it off, take a break, go to bed, wake up <laughs> and it's a new day. <laughs> Facts. But that was hard for me. I was like, okay, okay, wait, not feeling creative, but like, I know I can think of something and you just stress yourself out and it's a whole thing. It it is a whole thing. And then, you know, you have to be ready for even other things. I think this goes for any business that you're starting up. Um, I felt like, you know, I was in a relationship at the time and I have friends and I have family and I have my dog and whatever. And it's like, I couldn't, I was, the business was consuming so much of me and my time Mm -hmm. that I had nothing left to give all of these people in my life. So I think it's important. Warning guys. What? I said, that's a warning guys. (laughs) Warning. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, but just be ready for that and, understand that you have to find a balance a healthy balance and uh-huh. you still have to set aside time for yourself and for yeah. the people that you care about yeah it's hard to to switch it's like it's like how this is like having a baby and being like oh, i don't want to be a mom today let me just let me just turn that off for the day you know right. um can you tell me about like a breakthrough moment you had in your business be it in the first couple of years or something that really stands out to you like wow this is so cool Um, I think there were a lot of those, but I think one day when I was ordering product, (laughs) I'm not kidding you, sourcing products and ordering was just like a nightmare for the first two years because it wasn't a thing. So I was begging companies and just like, trying to do whatever I was trying to make my own dishwasher powder I'm like 
<laughs> I'm not like, this isn't my thing. I don't make soap. I don't want to make soap. I don't have time to make soap. I just want someone to sell me their stuff in a big amount. And I want them to take their container back and I want them to be into the circular economy, but they're just not, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So I think it was one day when I could call up this company that I had been working for or mm-hmm. working with. Yep. And I'd just been, we were just like this all the time. So I was like, just give me what I want. And I think it's when they really put this new um, like policy of how they were going to, oh, we're going to offer the bulk. We're going to offer this bulk side of our business specifically mm-hmm. for you and other people. Yay. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I remember after that, when I called to make an order or whatever, it was just so easy and I could get what I wanted. You're the change. And yeah, it was a change. You did it. And I think that's important also for consumers and individuals to know, like it does start on an individual level. I think that's huge. So many people, even in like the zero waste realm, you're kind of, there's like that half that's like, it's system change. And then there's this other half where it's like, it's individual change. Well, it's both, but it has to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's going to start within yourself. And then it goes to supply and demand. Well, why would companies want to make a change if I'm not ordering enough of that bulk item, Mm -hmm. but I need the individuals to get there. You know what I mean? So that was a really big um, breakthrough. And then it just kept getting better. Yeah, that's that's really cool to hear, I guess. Well, Brittany, you're mad chill. It's, this has been a pleasure. I really like hearing your story. And I'm I really excited to see how, how it continues to evolve. Um, what do you think the role businesses have to play in, in fostering these types of in, uh, societal changes, I suppose I'd call it. I, I usually I phrased it as climate, as businesses and climate change, but it really is, there's all sorts of different pieces to what's going on with this consumer economy where we're just kind of using up all our resources, whether it be changing the climate or killing all the animals or whatever, or polluting everything. So what role do you think businesses have to play? Because that story you just just said really, really says it. if you, you just keep hammering enough companies, they'll be like, hold on a second. People actually care about this shit, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, individuals have to start caring and they have to they have to spend their money in the right places. Mm -hmm. Um, It's huge. I think it's huge, really. Yeah. And I think we need to, I think we need to use what we have. Mm -hmm. You know, I had someone one time be like, I have like 200 plastic straws and I don't know what to do with them. I'm like, well, you could burn them. (laughs) You don't want to do that. (laughs) Um, you could throw them away right now, or you could use them and then throw them away. It's more wasteful if you just throw away those single use items right away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think it's important for people to be like, okay, I'm going to use what I have. And then I'm going to slowly transition. I'm going to slowly change the way I think about everything. I'm going to bring mindfulness to everything that I do. Yeah. And it starts slow, but then as you, maybe you started with the metal straw Mm -hmm. and then you got a bamboo toothbrush, but then you start thinking about the clothes that you're wearing, the clothes that you're buying, the food that you're buying, you know, maybe it's, I really want to buy locally and it's a whole thing. (laughs) It is a whole thing and it's a mindset and, and I, I love what you said as well because people like wake up one day and they're like, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to start eating healthy. I'm going to do all this stuff. But it is just like get one thing down mm-hmm. and, then it, and then you can build your momentum, right? And you can kind right. of build this lifestyle that you have in your mind. Get good at one thing and then everything else will follow. Right. Just as you said in your business, it just takes consistent effort and dedication. So I look forward to catching up with you again at some point and seeing how everything is going. I guess I just wanted to end this podcast just mentioning something you said on your website, which I think is so valuable, is that 
just doing something is enough, right? Like if it's like people are like, I want to get solar panels and get a Tesla or whatever, get like a Nissan Leaf and I want to stop using all this waste. But like if like every action you take and then especially if you vocalize and you're just like, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, people get pissed off if you say you don't eat meat or whatever. But like, if you just do one right. thing, it, it does make a big difference, you know? And I thought that, that you said that was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. And don't, that's another really good point. <laughs> don't get pissed off at people for things like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I will tell you right now, I do eat meat and I do eat dairy because I was raised on a dairy farm. I melt cows. For 10 Wisconsin, exactly. We put cheese on cheese here. Like it's a (laughs) real thing, but that's okay. Maybe you want to, if you still want to eat meat, you can still modify it, Uh you know, source it from your local farmers. Yeah. Support them that way. If you still want to eat cheese, maybe half of the time get a vegan cheese maybe half of your cheese is vegan and the other half is not. That's better than nothing. Yeah. Don't tell people they're, you know, they're the problem. Yeah. Because that's the problem. (laughs) Yeah. (sighs) Well put. I I don't think I've got anything else to say to that. That that was beautiful. (laughs) Um, Brittany, thanks for coming on. It's really been a pleasure to talk to you today. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so Um, much for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right, everyone. And we will be back, of course, next week. Everyone have a fantastic day. and Take it easy. Thanks so much for listening to Changing the Climate, a podcast hosted by Climate Change Realty, the most innovative real estate corporation ever conceptualized. Visit ccrboulder.com today.